Hello and welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and this right here in front of you is Too Many Bones. Now in the last video we had finished up the second day and we were just starting the third. Now I'm really excited to get back into this game. This is the playthrough I'm currently playing that I am the most behind. I'm, I'm the most into it and I can tell by the amount of people liking, commenting and watching these Too Many Bone, too, too many bone videos that this is also uh, of great interest to the community and I think that's awesome when you find something that uh, solo ga gamers can latch on to. I really hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. But enough about that, let's move right into day number three. So what do we do on day number three or at least the beginning of the game phase? We go ahead and we always tick that day counter up. So we're moving to the third day starting right now. What does that mean? Well, we have to pull an encounter for that day. Now, as you guys remember from the solo setup, in my prior videos, we put three special encounters on top of this deck, and we've already done two of them. They are sitting behind Drellin, successfully completed. This is the last preset special encounter we will do. After this, we run into a completely randomized solo base deck where I don't know what's coming I, I'm not familiar, essentially, is the best way to say it, with what encounters we will face. And that's why it's so important right now to get patches to a spot where we feel comfortable going into the fray. Because once we get across this river, the, uh, the Sabran River, when we get across this, we don't know what's going to happen. Like, we move into uncharted territory, essentially, and that's what this day is all about. So let's go ahead and read this special encounter and find out what we are doing. And, of course, we're crossing that river. So that river is a glistening vein of trade running, through, running the length of Daylor. Playfully beckons as it shimmers in the daylight up ahead. But with so few bridges in these parts, this crossing is an obvious spot for enemy scouts and traps. A journey of this importance leaves only two options. Tucking your ears and trying to blend in is risky but efficient. A boat at dusk carries less chance of discovery but requires business with the Malor, Ma Malor, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, a trade syndicate with their own set of drawbacks. So essentially, we could take a boat at dusk. Uh, Monair? I think it's Monair. That's how, you, that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, Monair. Okay, so we're going to flip this over now and we get our two options as per normal. So let's go in here and see what we got. First choice is tuck your ears and walk like a commoner. Okay, so this is, this is referring to the very first choice. If we do this, based on this symbol up top here, there's no battle to be had. At least there's no battle to be had based on that choice to start. It may evolve into something like that. But as you can see from the reference chart, it says the battle, the choice does not result in battle with that weird bug looking kind of uh, choice. But what's really cool about that one that I'm noticing before I even read it is we would gain one progress point and a training. Now this one, if we decide to tuck our ears and walk, says roll a d6 for each party member. We only have one. On any one or two your party spotted, find your first tyrant encounter in your deck, which we had shuffled into this deck right here. We would be pulling it out of the deck shuff and uh putting it on top yikes so in other words he's basically spotted us Dr uh, drellin would have spotted us coming across the river that's really thematic and very cool and then it says shuffle remaining cards and keep them underneath okay so the counter is an a success or considered an excess no matter what the outcome of that dice roll you're going to get that okay now we could also do this one down here it says hire the monero and this one says the monero are surprisingly easy to work with not only do they drop uh, us safely on the east bank of the river under the cover of darkness they also offer a trove loot gift maybe our success is good for business now this gets really tough because i've got two kind of peaceful ish choices although there's a risk with this one and this one would give me my very first trove that I have not seen in the game so far. However, what you'll notice is there's a, not only a progress point up here that I gained from successfully doing this one, but I also get a training point that I don't get down here. And to tell you the truth, getting a training point wouldn't be all that bad of a situation, especially for patches. I'd really be able to give him another boost. Um, 
the risk being that I could end up encountering the tyrant. So this is where I have to make a decision as to what is the smartest thing to do. Now you'll notice down here it says if you choose to hire the Monair, a shuffle special encounter trader, that particular trader into your encounter deck. So with this one, we're actually gonna be pulling the tyrant uh, encounter out because he spotted us if we roll a one or two. And on the bottom, we're guaranteed to put that, uh, some kind of trader encounter in our deck that may come back to potentially haunt us. I don't really know if it's a good or bad thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna risk it. I know a trove loot would make a lot of sense right now based on the fact I have a stone hammer, which would help me break into it, but we will have other opportunities to get trove loot and other loot. So I'm gonna hold off and I'm gonna go for that training point. I'm gonna risk it, guys. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm gonna do it. And I only have to roll 1d6 because I only have patches in my party. Let's see what happens when I do this. Please don't get a one or two. I got a five, perfect. So they, we were not spotted, okay? So because we're not spotted, we success, and, and regardless of us being spotted, uh, we're, it's considered a success um, whether we are or aren't but we're gonna gain the progress and we're also gonna gain the training point. And that's really the cool thing um, because, so in other words, nothing really here happens. I get this train, th I'm not only, like, this is a really cool thing. So I get a progress point essentially because I risked it is really what they're doing with the reward there. And then secondly, I'm getting a training point and then down here, I'm getting a progress point. For with this one card, I'm essentially getting two progress points, which is crazy, really gets me across the river much faster. So now we've got a total of four, and I know there's three here, but there's one also hidden away up on the card we just got. So really we have a total of four progress, which is very impressive. Um, so what we're gonna, and we also get a training point, okay? So we're gonna go ahead now, we've done the, the encounter, we successfully resolved the encounter. So now we're gonna go ahead and, and do our training points, log our progress, all that good stuff. So when we gain two progress points, we not only cross the Sabran River without any issue, we also gained an extra progress point and we got all the way across the mountains, which is crazy because we chose to risk it and not be, uh, not sit back essentially and wait for that night boat to kind of come and, or ferry to kind of come and help us across. We decided to just get a crack on the day and get across there that much quicker. Now, the cool thing is we're getting closer to being able to encounter Drellin, but you don't have to encounter him. You can still go through your encounter deck beforehand in order to try to train yourself up because I can tell you right now, his fight won't be easy. Uh, so we're gonna need to be sure we're ready for him. So let's go ahead now and spend our training point that we had gotten off of our encounter card on patches. So this is where strategy comes into play. Let's go ahead and think about this. We got six health right now, that's not bad. As of right now, we roll two attack dice and one defense, but at any point in time, we can roll three dice. To me, the one to go for right now, even though I'd love to have another skill here, is to probably go for an attack. And the reason being is that if I can roll one, two, like when you, when we're playing during the game and I roll, if I get a defense on my first roll, let's say I roll two attack and a defense for my dexterity of three worth, and I got a, I got a shield, I put the shield up here and then I no longer can roll a shield, right? Then I'm kind of sitting here going, I can still do a dex of two or three total, sorry, which means I could roll up to three dice. So why would, it would be pretty nice on the second rolls and going forward if I had defense dice up here to be able to roll an extra attack. That's my theory anyway. The debate is, is that a smart move? I don't know, because uh, <laughs> I haven't actually unlocked any of these uh, specific ones. The other thing we can do is take a quick look at uh, Patch's um, recommended items for bumping his character up. So it says we've, uh, we could also go with nutrients, for instance, or maybe toxins in order to help. Um, so maybe, uh, did you do three or four decks? A dex with another attack. Are right, your first priorities after that? Look at increasing your HP before going back for more attack or defense. Yeah, so I could go for another attack or I, really my thought is go for an attack or go for uh, an ability and that's where the things get tough. It's like, what do I do? So if I was to go for nutrients, let's take a look at what nutrients did. Nutrients is number five, which is this dice here. And I'm not too familiar with what that does. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the chart and see where that lines up. So that would be right here, the re-roll heal. It's uh, used instantly and considered locked and used in a lock slot. And you, a rolled med kit or med pack die may be re-rolled re that number of times. Oh, I see. So essentially what it is, is this is a boost 
to this die right here, this, or at least because it's the one I have unlocked at the moment. So this would allow me, like say I was to use this dice, you'd roll it, it would get, it would get, you know, hit on, you know, depending on what face it was. Of course, there's actually quite a few faces on this one. Uh, so it's very interesting, actually. There's quite a few different things that could happen there. So that's a really complex dice to choose because uh, I don't really know what all the different things could happen with that particular one. Um, but this this is interesting for sure. I'm debating. I'm like, do I do this? Do I do it? Probably. I th I'm kind of tempted to. Uh, but I'm also really tempted to get an extra attack die. That would be really handy for, you know, taking out some really nasty baddies. So I'm going to hold off until the next encounter to get this one. I know it sounds amazing. I'm just gonna hold off on it. I'm gonna go to tr attempt to get this attack. Now we know if we wanna try to train an attack, you have to roll two dice. So let's roll two dice real quick and see if we get it. We don't want any bones on this and we don't get any rerolls. Nice, so that means we successfully trained our attack up so we tick this to two and I'm okay, I'm happy with that because I wanna be, like Patches is already very much a defensive character in that he can heal himself for one every turn. Now my character is a little more focused on the attack side of things and I like that better. And then maybe we can go for nutrients next. Uh, so here we go, we're ready to go and we can, we've now completed uh, that portion of the day. So that would be the encounter phase done. We've divided the spoils, the training points, log process. We did that on the map over here. We're gonna go ahead and do our recovery phase. Now in our recovery phase, we can go ahead and do like our trading of loot within the party. There's only one of us, lock picking. We don't have anything to lock pick. So we will, uh, we can scout the area. Uh, now the cool thing is we've already scouted for this one so we could scout for another. Uh, so let's roll a die. And if I remember correctly, you roll a D6 and then we just see if we can see anything in the distance. Hopefully we do. We got a five. It says with a five that we can reveal up to a five point baddie. So we could reveal another one or we could go for five. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say because we are still on day number three and three times one is three. So we'd be getting, you know, we would still be getting up to, on the fourth day, we'd still even be pulling up to four single baddies from this stack. It makes more sense to keep seeing more of these baddies. So let's take a look at the baddie underneath and see what is ahead. We've pulled the Clay Gollum. Okay, I have heard bad things about this guy. I have heard bad things about this guy. I don't know, I don't know what Break is, but I know it's not good. Let's take a look real quick. So Break says, any attack that I use to reduce this unit's HP must be exhausted. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. So I've scouted ahead. I do not want to see this guy. I'm putting him on the bottom of the stack. So that was a good, good thing to do there because that could have really come back to haunt us. Um, he just goes on the bottom. You could either go on the bottom or I can keep him underneath here with uh, the other one I scattered ahead on the last time. So we're good, that's essentially it. We've actually just in this video right now finished the entire day. So now that we've gone ahead and done that, we can actually slip to the fourth day. So we're gonna tick our day counter up to four now. Uh, and we're gonna move into the fourth one. So we get to actually read the next encounter and see what we're gonna be going up against. And this is gonna get into a situation where I, I've never seen this stuff before. So here we go, let's dive into this. All right, I'll bring this right up so you guys can see this. It says, an issue of lung capacity, 34, 35, 36. How long before I drown in this bog? My ill-advised taunting landed me here, cornered in this soggy cesspool with no one to blame but myself. Thankfully, I remember that most even have an unnatural aversion to water, if you can even call it water. Yet there, they are, uh, yet there they sit at the water's edge with all manner of sharp and pointy objects. 42, 43, 44. The opposite bank is too far to swim to, and I abandon my gear behind a boulder on this side. Maybe I can reach out and grab one of their spears. Okay. So what's this gonna give us in terms of, as we go across the swamp for choices, we can go 67 or 66, 67, 68, grab it and go after that spear. And then at that very point, it says we would, we would populate the baddie points for the battle queue. And these, this denoted by this symbol right here means we would go into battle. And it would say right here, reduce by two the attack of the first baddie to enter lane one, use the weaken effect to show this and increase your attack by one for this battle. No skill dice can be used 
uh, can be used the first two rounds. Okay, so that's one option. We can do this, this helps reduce their attacks and increase ours. Or we can do, go for the gear. So this one says you still do a battle. This one says you still do your baddie points for the battle queue as per normal. No skill dice can be used for this, for, oh sorry, can be used for the first round. Okay, and look at all the crazy stuff we get from this one. If we succeed, we get a progress point, two training points, and a loot. That's awesome. So this is the thing, between the two of these things, there's not too much, well I shouldn't say that, there actually is quite a bit of a difference there between them. The question is what do we wanna, you know, which one do we wanna go for? Uh, it makes it tough to say. This one down here says I can't use any skill dice for the first round, but that's not that bad because I have one skill dice and I can handle not rolling that in the first round. That's not really much of a downside. This actually seems like the safer of the two choices, especially when, as you notice, there's no bonus for either of these choices. So besides the fact that this reduces the attack of the first bad interlane. Well, you know what? I kind of like this one. I like this one. I'm okay with this. Let's just go for the gear. Let's go for the gear. So that's what I'm choosing. I'm going to put this right here. And we're going to see what happens. This is going to be interesting. So we're going to go ahead. It is day number four. Now this is where things get a little crazy because you'll notice on day number four, when you create your battle queue, you got to do your days. So that's four times your number of gearlocks. So that's one. So that is four baddies. And four is underneath five. So all four will be coming from this stack. And we know because we scattered ahead for the bull pup that he will be one. So we can go ahead and put the bull pup in the very, very first lane with his initiative uh, point in there. So we got an initiative here of uh, three on this bull pup. So we're gonna go like this. We're gonna take his, uh, his stuff and kind of stack him up. This bull pup is a melee character denoted by the swords. He sits there. His initiative is three on the track, so he's gonna sit like that. Then we're gonna go ahead and reveal, and this is where things get weird because we don't know what's coming, but we gotta reveal this baddie queue. Now, just so you guys are aware, because I know the baddie queue doesn't, like, we'll be able to put a baddie in every lane because we're doing one, two, three, four baddies. I'm not gonna build a baddie queue outside of the mat like you normally would. I'm just putting them on right away. But in future rounds, you're supposed to build the baddie queue like to the side and bring them in, but I mean, you can do it as you want. Uh, so here we go, this is the next one. It is the, ooh, this doesn't look good. This guy is considered, uh, what is he, a goblin bomber. Oh, geez, this might be our first ranged. It is our first ranged character. So he's gonna come in in the second. Uh, this could be, this could be nasty. I don't, I don't, maybe I've got myself into a situation that I wasn't prepared for. Uh, so this guy's got an initiative of Five. Okay, so that's a little bit lower. That's that's good. That means, or sorry, that's higher. I mean, um, yikes, that's not good at all. So he goes way in the back here of this mat. Jeez. Okay, so that's pretty harsh. Next one. Who is next? We've got a bullfrog. Oh, these guys are nasty. They, they'll poison you when they get close to you, and they're melee characters. I know. I know a little bit about these guys. Two, three, and four for them. He's gonna come into the third lane. So we're gonna take this yellow chip and give it to him. He is a melee character, so he'll be here. This is getting ugly. And then this is gonna be a three. Now, when you've got two, uh, when you've got two of them here like this, uh, whichever one has the, and I have to double, I'll have to double check this, but when there's a tie between lanes, if I'm not mistaken, and I, I don't believe I am, I believe it's just based on, it goes by lane priority. So one goes ahead of two, goes ahead of three, goes ahead of four. So then this blue one essentially ends up being ahead of this one. And then we're gonna go ahead and reveal the fourth baddie, which is, oh my gosh, is that another, oh, it's a melee character, uh, a griffin yearling. So a griffin yearling is gonna come in, who's got flight. Uh, there's a lot of abilities here that I've never seen before, so this is gonna be quite the adventure. And then we're gonna go ahead and put two damage under on this one. He is a melee character, so he's gonna show up here. So as you can see, guys, doesn't take much, and all of a sudden, uh, we went from a very civil, uh, a very, and again, just so you guys know, this one's gonna sit here like this. Just so you know, we, we went from a very civil battle last game to what I would consider quite a very, it's gonna be a very interesting one with all of these guys uh, being at different initiatives and different abilities I don't know what I'm gonna run into here, but it's probably going to be nasty. Um, 
So we've put them in the lane, we put the initiative dice where they should be. Next step is to roll our gear lock to determine where he is supposed to sit in this initiative pool. So where is he? He's at a four. So he's literally dead center. Okay, look at that, just crammed between all of those enemies. So it looks like essentially we're gonna have this one here. It's gonna be the Goblin Bomber going first, then the Griffin Yearling, then myself, then the uh, Dire Wolf Pup, and then the Bullfrog, okay? This is, gonna, this is not gonna be easy. Now I can tell you right now, there's a couple things that I wanna talk about in terms of uh, strategy here. The very biggest thing that I can think of is uh, I will tell you that I do know that poison is really nasty and it's something that I'm gonna to have to be worried about. So I, at this point, I'm supposed to put patches on the battle mat to give him his position. Now I can go on any melee space across. So I have to choose wisely where I wanna drop him. Um, now I don't know too much about this guy here. He's fairly uh, weak. Now the good thing is, is that if I put myself here, now the only downside is if I put myself here, I, like. There's nowhere I can go except for here that would stop this bullfrog from being able to get to me because he would keep him at distance and poison says right here, when you poison, you set or reset a poison effect die on the target uh, to the number. Uh, so the poison number on that bullfrog is a two, just so you guys are aware. And uh, at the start of your turn, uh, or sorry, yeah, target takes true damage equal to the effect die at the start of their turn after applying damage reduce the effect die by one. So it just gets triggered down and over. But of course, if he's beside you continually attacking you, he's continually resetting that back to two, back to two, back to two, every single round if you don't get rid of him. So he is, he's a pain. He, he becomes a real big pain. Uh, and the only reason I'm talking about this stuff now is because we have only a couple more minutes, so I might as well just go over some of the abilities before, and we'll kick off the next video in my little battle here and see if I can survive this. This guy here, the Griffin Yearling, has what's considered flight. Now flight says after this unit attacks, place the flight effect die on it. If this effect is already there, remove it. While in flight, this unit is untargetable. Interesting, okay, so that's crazy. Um, wow, so if he, oh, that's so cool. If this effect is already there, then remove it while in flight. This, so you can't even target him when he's like off the ground. So he's just gonna come in and out and in and out, depending on his abilities, that's crazy. And then uh, this guy here, the Goblin uh, Bomber, he's got Mischief 1, which if I remember correctly, he takes away. Uh, mischief allows you to remove a number of dice, the player's choice from the target's active slot. So he's gonna essentially be trying to screw me over by taking my defense dice away from me. And then every single time he rolled, the cool thing about him though for us as a bonus is every time he rolls a bone, you see the word careless there, he actually takes a damage. So he's kind of a little bit stupid and he's holding bombs and every once in a while when he drops a bomb, he blows himself up and hurts himself a little bit, which is kind of comical. So, and then of course the Dire Wolf Pup, Pup that we fought last time just has lash back and hits me for one. Regardless, we've got a lot of different mechanics coming into play and you can see how just a small four x four grid map can turn into a strategy nightmare for me to try to, to wade through. So if you guys are excited as I am to get into this battle on day four of our adventure, come back in the next episode and we're gonna jump right into it. If you like what you see and you want to see more, uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Give me any feedback of anything I may have missed and hope you guys are enjoying this series. There is more to come. Until the next one guys, keep rolling solo.